Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. So many people say that the best way to get better at improvising, specifically in jazz, is to transcribe. Is this true? I'm gonna be sharing my thoughts on this topic in this video, and I'm also gonna share with you how much I've transcribed, and it might surprise you a little bit. Just before I get into that, if you haven't yet checked out my free masterclass, The Best Way to Create Melodic Solos, it's completely free. You can get it by clicking the link at the top of the description down below. If you've ever wondered how to connect any types of chords together in a horizontal fashion and create lyrical and melodic solos, this masterclass will help you out. Not only do you get the video masterclass for free, but there's also downloadable PDFs that go along with it that are also completely free. This video is about transcribing full solos. I'll explain what I mean by that specifically in a little bit and you'll see why that's important a little bit later. Recently on Instagram, I asked two questions. One was, how many full solos have you transcribed? And the second one was, how many full solos do you think I transcribed? Over a thousand people participated in each one of those polls and here are the results. For the first question where I asked, how many full solos have you transcribed? The majority, 59%, said less than five. 20% said five to 10 solos, 9% said 10 to 20, and 12% said more than 20 solos. Then for the question where I asked, how many full solos do you think I've transcribed? It's completely flipped. Less than five was only 18%, five to 10 was 11%, 10 to 20 was 14%, and the majority, 58%, said I have transcribed more than 20 full solos. Here's a fact that might surprise some of you out there. I've been playing saxophone now for 26 years. I started when I was nine, I'm now 35. I have transcribed fewer than five full length solos in my entire life. Yes, that's right. Less than five total in my entire life. Now that's talking about full solos and here's the whole point of this video. I have transcribed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and probably thousands and thousands of small fragments of solos. That could be little licks, lines, patterns, choruses, but not full solos. Why is this important and why am I making this video? Because I haven't transcribed that many solos, but I've transcribed lots of small parts. How can that help you? Well, first let's talk about why transcribing is a vital skill and it's a very important exercise that you should be doing if you want to improvise and play jazz music. Learning to improvise on an instrument is like learning a new language. Sure, you can learn to speak a foreign language from a book and you can read the words out of the book and try to sound it out and that's gonna be great. But just like when you learn your first language, you're going orally first. You're just hearing the inflections, you're hearing the accent. That's why certain people have certain accents because they grew up around that. It's not because they read it in a book with an Australian accent or a British accent or a New Jersey accent when I say water. It's because I've heard people speak that way or you've heard people speak that way and you internalize it and then when you start learning to read and write, you can apply that to what you've heard and what you're speaking and that's how you develop that language. The same thing applies when you're learning to improvise and play jazz music. If I'm trying to play in a medium swing style, but I've never heard anybody play swing before, never heard Louis Armstrong, I never heard Ella Fitzgerald, you know, I'm not gonna be able to authentically play in that style just because I'm playing one and two and three and four and one, right? Just because I'm reading the rhythms correctly doesn't mean I'm gonna be able to get the inflections, the accents, all the articulations, the dynamics, the actual feel and the pocket of the swing and all the other non-note musical elements of that style. Transcribing is also an incredibly powerful tool when you wanna learn the harmonic devices of certain players. If you hear someone play a cool lick, a cool phrase, a cool pattern, a nice line, or even just an interesting note at a certain part in their solo, what you can do is transcribe that, learn that by ear, then go a little deeper to actually use it in your playing. What you're gonna do is find out what part of the song they played that line or that note at, look at what chords are there, look at what notes are being played, and then you can assess what that is. Oh, that's a tritone sub sound. Oh, he's playing the sharp nine. Oh, she's using a sharp 11. Whatever it is, you can find out what the actual analysis of that harmony is, and then you could take that and use it whenever you come across that same harmony when you're playing if you wanna use that same sound. That's the great thing about transcribing, is that you can take what somebody did, but then apply it to your own playing. It's not just cutting and pasting. It's not just taking this cool Michael Brekelik and try to shoehorn it into when I play Blue Boss at the jam session. No, it's about figuring out certain sounds, shapes, colors, rhythms that certain players use that you enjoy to listen to and you want to use. Then you do the work of seeing how it fits 
into whatever songs you're playing and the musical situations you're playing. And then you can apply that to that song combined with everything else that you've learned in your entire life. All these little phrases that I'm gonna talk about in a second, combine them all together to create your own playing in the way that you want to sound yourself. Okay, that's great. That's why transcribing is amazing and I think everybody should be doing it 100%. But why did I make this video specifically talking about full solos compared to short snippets? Well, I think the big elephant in the room when transcribing full solos is the fact that they take a ton of time. Certain people, not myself, are really good at transcribing full solos and they can sit down and transcribe a 15 chorus blues solo in like an hour and a half. And that's great. If they can do that and then add it into your playing, that's amazing. I don't have that skill. It takes me a long time time. So when I'm trying to transcribe something because I enjoy listening to it, it's much easier for me to take a small phrase or a small pattern and use that in my playing, add it to my practice routine, run it in 12 keys, turn it upside down, add alterations to it, whatever, and make that part of my playing if it's a small phrase versus if I have to sit down and do an entire solo that might take me a week or longer to learn. Now, does that mean sitting down and actually doing that work over a week or a month or a year if it's a long, really complicated solo? Does that mean that's bad? No, absolutely not. But for me personally, and from what I've done playing and also teaching, it's a lot more applicable if you take smaller phrases shorter little lines, snippets, fragments, licks, whatever you wanna call them, it's much more important to use that in your playing because you can more easily digest that lick, learn it and get it out in your playing. And also you're gonna have that much earlier success with it versus waiting long, long, long time to go through the entire solo. Another thing with full solos is you might not love every part of the solo. And if you're using transcribing to help your playing and your own improvising, I think it's really important to not waste your time with things that you're not gonna use and you really don't want to learn and really focus on the things that you do wanna learn. Now this has nothing to do with the actual exercise of transcribing and how it makes your ear better. If you're trying to increase your ear training and really get better at transcribing and hearing things, yes, do full solos if you want. Do the entire solo all the way through, even the parts that don't really speak to you, because that's gonna really train you to listen deeply. This video though, I'm talking about how it affects you as an improviser and what the most efficient and concise path is to transcribing and applying it to your playing. Another thing people talk about with transcribing is the actual sound of the player. Like we're talking tone quality, intonation, articulation, those things. You don't need to transcribe full solos, many of them, to get that out of a certain player. A lot of people can hear the influences in my playing. When I play Stars Fell in Alabama, a lot of people say, oh man, you listen to a lot of Johnny Hodges. Oh man, you listen to a lot of Cannonball. The answer is yes and yes. I've never transcribed a full solo from either of them. When I play some bebop stuff, people go, oh man, you're definitely listening to Dick Oates a lot. Yes, he's an incredibly big influence on my playing. I've never transcribed an entire Dick Oates solo. Oh man, when you really dig in and you're going hard with the band, I can hear that Kenny Garrett stuff. Yes, I've listened to hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of Kenny Garrett, and I've transcribed many, 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 many small snippets of his playing. I've never transcribed a full Kenny Garrett solo. The point I'm trying to make is, if you take many small phrases and fragments that you like, and it could be harmony, it could be rhythm, it could be articulation, it could be sound, and you work through those, analyze those, see why they sound the way they do, use what you want, get rid of the rest, that to me is a more efficient, concise, and practical use of transcribing. I have to give another disclaimer here in the video because I know a lot of people are probably thinking this. This is not to say transcribing full solos is bad. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you don't have to transcribe full solos from beginning to end to really get something from the solo or to learn to play like that player or learn to do things that that player does. One of the reasons I've been reiterating this and one of the main reasons why I even made this video is I've heard from a lot of students that were getting frustrated because they were working on one transcription for a really long time and they were getting you know, bored, they were getting frustrated because they just thought of it as now an exercise just they had to get through even though they didn't really want to finish the solo. They got a lot out of it already but they're like, I have to. Sure, if they're doing it, like I said, for ear training purposes, you know, finish it. You got to do it. You got to break through that. But I think it'd be a much better use of your time 
if you just take the parts that you really enjoy, you really wanna dive deeper into, or your teacher thinks you should dive deeper into, rather than have to do the entire solo and take way too long to do it, and you're really missing time that you could be using and spending on those smaller snippets to incorporate it into your playing. You can still progress and learn a lot by transcribing small phrases. You don't have to transcribe full solos to get the most out of transcribing. I would love to hear your thoughts on this, whether you're a teacher, you're a player, you're a student, whatever it is, because I know there's gonna be people who agree with me, some people who really disagree with me, but that's totally fine. This is just my point of view and my experience with it. So please go in the comments down below, let me know what you feel one way or the other on this topic. Like always, if there are other topics that you wanna see me discuss here, please leave those in the comments down below as well. Don't forget to watch my free masterclass about creating melodic solos, and I show you my simple six-step voice leading process. Once again, that's at the top of the description down below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.